Hey folks, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Today we're going to talk about my favorite metal. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, what's Mike's favorite metal? Is it sodium? Nah. Is it yttrium? Yttrium? Why would I like yttrium? My favorite metal is bismuth because it's shiny and it makes real pretty crystals and it that's pretty much it it's shiny and makes pretty nice crystals and one of the other cool things about bismuth is even though it's a heavy metal it's not very toxic at all and it has a very very low melting point so let's go into the lab where we can safely melt some bismuth re-solidify it and see if we can get some of those pretty pretty crystals okay so my method here isn't all that sophisticated I've got a bunch of cubes actually it was a big slab of bismuth that my dad gave me and uh, real pretty jagged formations when you cut it with a hacksaw and then just a one cup stainless steel measuring cup and I'm gonna put it on a hot plate or possibly under a Bunsen burner it melts at 271 degrees Celsius, which is 520 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, that's, that's pretty darn hot. And so I'm going to take precautions. Safety glasses will be in the on position and heat resistant gloves. And it's going to take a long time to get this thing melted, this stuff melted. So uh, I'll have to find something to do in the meantime. <laughs> cools it forms a crystal structure which is kind of strange the outside grows faster than the inside and it grows in a stair step fashion that's called a hopper crystal really really pretty okay now that I've put all this pressure on myself and melted the bismuth let's see if I can make the crystals going on here is that little uh, see that that's that slab of bismuth that sort of fell in and I did not want to be around when it happened and that hasn't really melted yet. The other thing that you might not get a sense of is that this is heavy. Bismuth is about almost as dense as lead. So this looks like just one cup, but really, if you figure out with a density of it being about 10, this is several pounds. So when that gets done melting, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to let the heat go down slowly and that's how you always get good crystals is when you cool slowly and uh, but still got some melting to do it's getting there though starting to solidify on the top and it's a waiting game if I wait too long the crystals will grow now they're gonna grow from the top where less heat is to the bottom and if I wait too long they'll reach the bottom and fuse to it and I won't be able to get the crystals out. If I don't wait long enough, then I don't get big crystals. And if I goof up, which as you've seen before, has happened, then I can just remelt the whole thing and try again. Okay, this is exciting because, you know, if you see I start poking around, I got one solid mass just kind of floating there. And I think it's time this, these edges are hard. I'm gonna go in there, see if I can pull something out before it's too late. Okay, and it's time for the results. I had to put my camera down. And you see these kind of cute little cubic shapes. I fished these ones out. I feel like I didn't do quite a good job. I needed a, I needed a bigger sample size. But what was really cool is when I poured out my container. Now check it out, look inside. Whoa. It's like a little futuristic city of hopper crystals. It's hopper crystal city. I don't know why I'm whispering, because I don't want to disturb them. 
that they're sleeping in Hopper Crystal City. That one right there especially. Thanks for watching Science with Mike. Ta! Oh, that was stupid.